I'm wearing a suit I got as a graduation present, which was supposed to impress bosses at places where suit wearing is the norm. I don't think it has as much power here in this windowless room under fluorescent lights that wash everything in the same harsh electric pallor. I'm applying for a holiday hire position, which I desperately want, because I'm 24 and I live with my parents. <laughs> the door opens and Des walks in. She's a severe looking woman with an indeterminable accent. It's only three steps between the door and the chair across from me, but her stiletto boots clack with each footfall. Des dresses nice, like someone who is constantly ready for a parent-teacher conference. Her outfit is topped off with designer frames. Nice suit, she says with a smile. I can't tell if she's kidding, but I immediately feel ridiculous. She opens the thin file folder, which confuses me. There are only two sheets of paper in there. My resume, which still uses a template I learned in 11th grade, and a printout of the online application. Is a file really necessary? Des studies the paper, the color of her glasses switching from bruised blue to neon purple depending on the light. She leans back, tilting on her heels, and doesn't make eye contact when she interviews me. My answers adopt the tried and true strategy of rephrasing every question as a declarative and inserting superfluous adverbs. How important is a shopping experience? A shopping experience is completely important. <laughs> would you describe yourself as a people person? I would totally describe myself as a people person. Do you like working with others? I absolutely like working with others. Des smiles when she's finished and offers her hand. You start Black Friday. Report in two weeks for training. I'm so grateful that I gush and blurt out, thank you, thank you for this incredible opportunity. <laughs> After two jobless years, I'm finally employed again. I'll be able to buy Christmas presents for my mom and dad. I'll be able to afford a hardcover book. I'll, f <laughs> I'll finally feel like a useful human being. Here are some facts I learned while training. One, anyone who chooses to pay with a check has just made my job 40 times more complicated. Two, holiday hires are not eligible for the employee discount. Three, every purchase must end with the Macy's Star Service script, which goes, would you like to sign up for a Macy's card today? You'll get a special discount on future purchases, including exclusive offers tailored just for you. It's our way of saying thanks for shopping at Macy's. At home, I study the official Macy's marketing, learn exactly what a door buster is, and practice the star service script while smiling in the mirror. My parents, excited that maybe the economy is picking up, advise me in the best way to impress supervisors. Because sure, this is just a holiday gig, but they might keep someone on, and who knows, maybe there's a management training track. I know my parents, we want the same thing. For me to escape this arrested development I've entered ever since the economy tanked. I want to feel like I'm making progress, like I'm moving forward. 10 a.m., Black Friday, my first day. Dez's boots clack across the home furnishings department as she shows me to my register. My first customer wears the telltale signs of post-Thanksgiving consumerism like someone who has borne the brunt of stomach flu for a week. Eyes ensconced in gray bags, hair tangled and wiry, skin clammy and discolored. She hands me her items and I follow the Macy's Star Service script. I already got one, she says, brandishing the red plastic card and the small yellow coupon that claims, take an extra 20% off with your Macy's card. But the coupon had expired. <laughs> but I got a Macy's card, she says. I'm sorry, ma'am, I say. I am a Macy's card holder. It was as if the little piece of plastic allowed her safe passage out of a war-torn country. <laughs> Why would they give me the coupon if it wasn't going to work? I have no answer to this, which angers her more. She sucks at her teeth in indignation as she snatches her bags and walks away. I hear the tk 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 of Dez's boots behind me. She folds her arms and narrows her eyes. Now, what did you do wrong there? I feel like a kid caught cheating on a spelling test, and my face adopts a look of prostration. I, her coupon was 
You didn't offer her the card. She speaks like I've forgotten to check my rearview mirrors. You must always remember, no matter what the customer asks, to offer the card. But she already had. Uh, Des places a scratched and beaten cl plastic clipboard in front of me. On it is a paper with everyone's names. Next to those names in scarlet ink are tiny slashes. Every customer who you sign up for a card, you get a tally mark. You want these tally marks. Trust me, do not forget again. I nod as she clacks away. End of the first weekend, I'm exhausted. At home, I flop on the couch and flip on the TV. It's late, but my next shift isn't until noon the next day. I channel surf and decide what better way to unwind than with a calm, relaxing, stress-reducing, hard-hitting, issue-based documentary. <laughs> Maxed out, hard times, easy credit, and the era of predatory lenders is one of those gut-wrenching HBO documentaries that paints a we're all so fucked picture of society. The movie tells personal stories attached to credit cards, cutthroat collection agents who hound debtors, the misinformed public who think credit cards mean free money, and finally, the college students who commit suicide over their mounting fees and balances. <laughs> Once it's over, credit cards have officially replaced clowns as the scariest goddamn thing ever. <laughs> Debt is the adult version of the boogeyman, inescapable, omnipresent, and all-consuming. As I fall asleep, I replay the sales script in my head and realize, shit. The Macy's card is a credit card. I'm shilling for a corrupt system. If they're the boogeyman, what does that make me? The boogeyman's wingman? The guy who tells the boogeyman that his new tribal tattoo is totally sick? <laughs> the next day, I don't pitch the card. I skip the bit about rewards and customer loyalty and throw a big grin at the customer, thrust their bag at them and say thank you, all while try to, trying to non-verbally communicate the need to run from this wretched place. The energy I should direct towards credit cards, I transfer my personal white whale, an item that no one ever looks at, and the section never needs restocking because it's so unnecessary. The Cuisinart popcorn maker retails for $59.99, and I pitch that item like it is a miracle elixir which will provide a lifetime of memories. Every pitch segues into a Norman Rockwell sketch. Imagine the smell of fresh, hot kernels popping all soothing and rhythmic as you settled in to watch a miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> but every morning, Des calls together the department and pulls out the clipboard like Moses with his stone tablets. She says the names of the employees followed by the number of red slashes next to their names. Annabeth, three. Tony, seven. This guy, Diego, who always wears vests, is going to get a free blender out of it. But the ultimate prize, Des reminds us, is that the person who signs up the most credit cards will be looked upon favorably for a permanent position. At lunch that day, I check my bank account. I have money, actual money. I can afford to buy off the dollar menu with wild abandon. <laughs> I get my dad the walk he wants and my mom a cookie tray. There will be modest presents from me under our Christmas tree. I realize I want to keep my job. I feel like an adult. And being an adult means doing things you don't believe in, right? <laughs> Two hours left in my shift and I meet Marie, a little old lady speaking broken English, smiling sweetly if blankly at everything. I take a deep breath, swallow what is left of my dignity and principles, and do the pitch. One of the few English words Marie knows is, yes. She has questions that I can't answer because I don't know the answer, because I don't want to know the answer. I just keep telling her that she can pay her bill online or in store, and isn't that convenient? She carefully inscribes her social security number, and I wish she would stop. I pray that she will return the form and tell me that she doesn't really need another credit card. I just want her to take her crock pot and go but she doesn't. Hey, you got one, Diego says. Yeah, I got one. I felt dirty. I don't pitch anymore for the rest of the season. January 3rd, when the ornament prices drop from $15 to three, Des calls me into the same room that I was hired in, the small windowless place with bad lighting that feels like an interrogation. 
So, Des says, drumming her lacquered nails on the plastic tabletop, how would you rate your job performance? I know the adverb trick won't work this time, so I answer as honestly as possible. Satisfactory, I say. How many Macy's cards did you sell? She asks. One, I say. She says some things about the economy and things are hard all over and the need for cutting back. I won't have a job in the next two weeks. Once the Christmas trees are put back in the dusty cement storage area, I'm out too. Des wraps up by asking, what do you think you'll take away from your time here? And I look at her and I feel grateful and sad and a little like a failure, but at least I failed with some dignity and that's not nothing. So I look at her and say the thing I say every day. Des, can I interest you in a popcorn maker? Thank you. That's Ed Farragut.